The following is a conversation with a spirit called Harry that took place on March the 30th, 1957. Questions are asked by George Woods and Betty Green, and the medium was Leslie Flint. He begins. Soon after I died, I couldn't get away from the pubs. I used to like a drink. My idea of a good time was going into the pub and staying there until they chuck you out. When I died, I couldn't get rid of the desire to go to the pubs and chat, but I could neither drink nor talk to friends. But I got satisfaction going around the pubs and seeing my old friends and listening to their conversations, but I couldn't join in the conversation. When I was on earth, I never had much money. What I did have went in the pub. But it suddenly dawned on me that if I can be in the pub, I could be in Timbuktu or China. So I decided to have a trip around the world and learn quite a bit. But it got a bit lonesome going around on your own and watching other people enjoying themselves and felt it would be nice if I could get away from Earth. When I was a kid and sent to Sunday school, we were taught about going to heaven. I thought it was a bloody nonsense, even though I was so-called dead. I wasn't miserable being dead, but I was not happy either. I couldn't visualise any sort of place where there were people playing harps and that wouldn't do it for me, if that was the idea of heaven if it even existed. So I thought, I'd better stick to Earth. But there was a desire to know more. Eventually, I began to be conscious of someone following me and thought, mm, who the hell is this? I look around and have a funny prickly sensation, but I never saw anyone, but I always felt there was someone there. Then I thought that perhaps other spirits might be able to get in touch with me. One day I thought, perhaps if I got away from the old conditions and mentally threw out my thoughts for someone to come and help, I'd get some help. So I went down to a little place I'd been to when I was a young kid in Suffolk. I found a place where we used to go down and see an old aunt of my mother's. She would give me a week's holiday from the city, and I liked to sit under the trees, watch the animals and the birds. There was one favourite spot under a tree with a river running down the bottom, and I would sit and daydream. If there are people on high spheres, perhaps they can come and contact me and give me a helping hand. Someone went down to this place and found the same spot and the same tree. Lovely spring day and there wasn't a soul in sight. I was all by myself. And I just sat there and closed my eyes and thought, well, here goes. I said, if there's anyone around me, if you're trying to get in touch with me, can you make yourself known? I'd like to be helped if possible, because I'm dissatisfied with the way I'm going, with the old routine, and I thought something ought to be done about it. I was sitting there, concentrating, and just waiting for something to be done about it. I was sitting there, concentrating, and just waiting for something to happen, and all of a sudden, right in front of me, I saw a beautiful spirit. I thought to myself, this is just a bloody imagination, and this can't be serious. There standing in front of me was the figure of a fellow. I should have thought it had been about 23 or 24. Fair haired. It was curly. Nice looking in this beautiful outfit. And he looked at me and I looked at him and neither of us spoke a blasted word. I thought, well, this is an hallucination. I never said a word and neither did he. And all of a sudden, it was just as if his mind entered my mind. I could hear him within myself saying, it's up to you chum, and I thought, up to me what? Then I felt as if I was being mesmerised, and all I knew was that I stood up and he gradually backed away. As he was backing away, I was thinking to myself, bloody fool, if he goes much further, he'll fall in the water, because there was this stream at the bottom. But he didn't. He got down to the bottom, and there was me following him. He got to the water's edge, and I thought, here goes, boy. You're going to have it now, cock. But he didn't fall in, and it was just as if he walked across the water. And I followed him in a kind of trance, and I thought, well, nothing ventured, nothing won. I couldn't resist. I had to go following him. Then all of a sudden, it was just as if someone had put me in a bloody lift. Here was me going up in the air. Of course, he was up in the air and all. 
I thought, oh Christ, I'll shut my eyes for this bit. I was in a proper state, a proper panic. Suddenly, it seemed as if we were floating miles up in the air. Everything seemed to get further away. The chimneys, houses and treetops. Suddenly, we were up in the clouds and I could see a plane coming along. It was just as if we were floating together. Suddenly, there was singing in my ear and I lost consciousness and came to a very nice room. Clean and comfortable, with bed, sheets, everything clean, with furniture and light streaming through the window. There were birds singing outside. And all of a sudden, the door opened and it was my mother. Not as an old lady, but as she was when I was young. She came forward and called my name and I couldn't speak. She sat down beside me and told me she'd been waiting for me for a long time. But I wouldn't come, as she'd been very worried and upset about me. She'd been trying to help me when I was on Earth, but found great difficulty in getting near me, because I was always in the old boozer with the boys. I wasn't a bad sort, it was a drink. She said that she'd been waiting for me, and at last I'd come. I said, well mum, what about that guy, that fellow who brought me? Who's he? She said, well, we call him George. So I said, George? You don't mean that man they call Saint George, do you? She said, there ain't no saints here, boy. That's what the earth people call people. He's just George to us. He's a very fine soul and he's very advanced and spiritual. He's a man who goes down to earth to help humanity in different ways. She was telling me things about myself and it made me feel awful when I realised she knew what I've been up to over the years. She said, I've known all along, everything. After all, we learn to understand ourselves and we learn to realise the weakness in human nature. And you, you haven't been a really wicked boy, you've just been very foolish. And I've been waiting for you to turn over a new leaf, to see different things. I knew you'd come one day, but I had to get someone who's capable of helping you. But before I could help you, you had to help yourself. You had to go around to different places until you got sick of it, until you wanted to know more. When the time was ripe, we were able to help you. And when you've been rested and got used to your new home here with me, you'll see things differently and settle down and do something that would interest you. Well, I said, why aren't you with Dad? She said, Dad and I, we got along and we were good pals, but we weren't really suited to one another. We weren't an ideal couple, so I'm not with Dad. You're only with the people with whom you're really in tune with, people that you're right with. Suddenly, something plonked on the bed, and there was a cat. And when I was a nipper, I used to pull the bugger's tail. But Mother always used to reprimand me and say you must leave the cat alone and be kind to animals. The cat was sitting on the bottom of the bed. Old Samuel, we used to call it. I said, Mum, how come you've got Sam here? Well, I was very fond of Sammy when I was on Earth. And you know, he used to be a naughty boy. And he used to tease that cat. My mother then said to me, Are you hungry, son? Well, that struck me a bit odd. I thought, well, here I am. I'm supposed to be in heaven, asking him if I'm hungry. And I thought to myself, well, the idea of eating is not a bad one. I said, well, mum, I don't know. Do you eat over here? She says, yes, if you want to. The sounds then ended at that point. 